Hi all YouTube, it's AC Dodd and welcome to another episode of On The Road Tuning with me, AC Dodd. And this time, I've got three cars for you. So let's get stuck in. Okay, here we are in Aylesbury. And we got a nice little Mini. Another Mini. This one's been a bit modified. So it's got a old school dash, but factory interior. And under the bonnet, the 998's gone and we got an MG Metro, an original 12G996 engine. So uh, I've already uh, I've already um, had a quick look under the bonnet of here. I haven't done any tuning yet, just done a little bit of uh, little bit of work. But let's go and speak to the owner and see why he's called us down. Okay, so this is Steve. Steve owns this Mini. Uh, why have you called us down, Steve? Uh, it's been running a bit rough and, uh, you know, we go on a few runs in the car and uh, it's been rich and it, and it really needs a good tune-up just to uh, get it back on top form again. Okay, so um, when you say uh, obviously it needs a tune, is it uh, is the uh, lack of performance? Yeah, basically lack of performance. When you put your toe down, you get the big before it starts to think about doing anything. So flat spots and just a bit flat. Yeah, and a bit lumpy. <laughs> and a bit lumpy. Okay. Yeah, All right. right. Well, let's uh, let's have a dig in under the bonnet and see uh, see if we can find some of the uh, lost power. Yeah, sounds good to me. Okay, so we're under the bonnet now. Uh, I've already started on this one, but uh, just to give you an overview of what we've got, uh, this is the usual MG Metro conversion in a mid eighties type mini. So. Um, we had the uh, ballast feed connected to the coil. Well, obviously, this has got a 65D Dizzy, and uh, any of you know anything about uh, the types of ignition system fitted to minis, then this, this should be running a, a full 12 volt feed. So to that end, I've run in an extra cable and got rid of the ballast feed. So this is now up to full power. Uh, I've put a new set of HT leads on it, along with a set of BP6E spark plugs, and gapped them at 35 thou. Uh, there was the actual resistance of the factory leads that were on it was still okay. The only problem is, is they'd gone hard. So the insulation was, uh, you know, on its way out. And obviously the resistance of the leads I use are about a third of the factory ones. So uh, that with non-resistor plugs in there now uh, has certainly sharpened the engine up. So now we're going to move on to ignition timing uh, uh, before we go to the carburetor. Distributor. I can't turn the distributor anymore because it's hitting the, um, okay. uh, the star mower. Yeah. So the reason why it's doing that is because this combination was never fitted. Right. So it never had that type of dizzy with yeah. that type of, uh, of, of um, star mower from the factory. So uh, this, should have, this, this engine, uh, that engine number never had that dizzy. Right. right? Okay. So yes, it had that start motor, but it should have had a points distributor. But um, someone's, put, someone's put the later ignition with it for the right reasons. Yeah. But the later ignition also goes with a short start motor, so it's out of the way. Oh, right. Right. So you've got a long start motor, and you've got yeah, the yeah. American type, and it's hitting it. So what we now need to do is we need to take the dizzy driver out, and we need to take the compressor out, and it's got a bit of a little 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 bit of Yeah, that, I rev that now, it's in a different place. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. You've got to get the, these carburetors have got to return to the same position. Otherwise, 
I'll tune it, and when you go for an MOT, it might out. fail. Yeah. Right, so if you listen to that, and that's because it's warm. I still haven't started tuning it yet, I'm still trying to get the bass line. Yeah. That an MOT fail there. Is so it? it gets into the eights. Uh, yeah, okay. It's, it's fogging. And you can see we're wandering. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So 0.9 is 3.4% CO. Yeah. 0.96 is 1% CO. Right. So what you can see is that's varying more than the entire bang. Uh, yeah. yeah. Because of its warmth. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what we've now done is uh, we've got into this tune, replaced it, uh, the HT leads, spark plugs, and uh, I also had to move the distributor around. Um, the distributor drive round because the distributor would go round and because of all the mismatched parts that have been fitted it would actually hit the starter motor uh this distributor was never fitted with an inertia starter motor so um because it's got an inertia starter motor the module hits hit hit the uh, side of the starter motor so i had to take that out remove the drive shaft move that round one and on this one because it had all had the wrong clamp and the wrong alternator i had to take the alternator off as well to get the spanners in to fit it all so yeah this one took a lot longer than one would normally imagine. <laughs> anyway, so that's all working. And as you can now see, I've got a brand new carburetor because unfortunately the carburetor on it was, uh, no matter what I did to it, I couldn't lean it out 2000 revs. So we was in the low 0.8s on fueling. So uh, unfortunately we've got to have a new carb. So that's where we are now. Let's get that bolted on and tuned. Okay, so we've got this one finally dialed in. We've got the new carburetor on. Uh, that's obviously solved our fueling problem. Um, and obviously the engine's running really well now. So what we're going to do is send the owner out in it and see what he thinks. All right, Steve, you can see the car's outside now. Look, you can all see the smile already as well. So you've been out for a drive. What's it like? Absolutely amazing. I, I want to know where the old engine is because it's like it's got a new engine in it. It's so much smooth. The power band just runs right through to the top revs. Unbelievable difference. A lot more pleasant to drive, I have to say. Excellent. So uh, you weren't expecting that outcome? No, not not that smooth. No, no, I must admit it's like a different engine. I reckon if you put your toe down, you go back to the future. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is, is is it's quite a bit more powerful then? Completely different, yeah. It's just like a new engine being put in there now. It's e just so smooth, uh, right up to the top end revs. Excellent, okay. So um, you thought this wasn't... Although I think uh, it's right in saying you, you didn't think it was too bad, although it was a bit flat, but... Are you... Exactly, yeah, yeah. I thought, oh, just needs a little bit of tweaking you know and that'll feel feel a lot better but it's just it's completely different you know it's like <laughs> completely different <laughs> it's so smooth it is unbelievable all right okay uh, and all no flat spots anything no that i could detect no excellent all right um so would you recommend this to anyone else absolutely 100 percent. yeah absolutely. all right well thank you very much and thanks for getting me down steve thank to you. sort this one out yeah thank you right second car we've got a beauty look at this this is an original survivor 70s Clubman Estate. Original wheels. Oh, let's have a look inside. Can't wait. Look at that lovely interior. That's a real survivor. Original dash, there's a modern radio has been put in and it's an auto. And there's uh, oil pressure. And the best thing is, Look at them miles, just 19,000. What a lovely survivor. Okay, under the bonnet, we've got this beautiful 998 Auto. Look at the way that's running, just purring. The great big heavy torque converter, these, these idle very nicely. So uh, let's go and talk to the owner and see why he's called us down, being that's running very nicely. All right, this is Dan. Why have you called us down, Dan, to this lovely Clubman? Well, it gets used quite frequently, actually, and it's just not running quite right since we've changed a few bits from the originals that have ended up perishing over the years. And we just want to bring it back up to full full health and make sure it's driving nicely. For, okay, uh, I noticed there's a slightly bigger bore exhaust fitted underneath. 
Yeah, we couldn't get the original one. The original one from the 70s rusted out only a couple of years ago. And we could only get the ones that were in stock at the time, which was a slightly bigger one. So we've had to go with that for now. Okay, so what's the engine doing then? It's just when you put your foot down, it hesitates and it takes a couple of seconds and it'll pick up and it'll go like it used to. But I just want to get, get all that smoothed out and make sure it's running as good as possible. Okay, all right. Well, let's take a look and see uh, we can inject the smoothness back into it. Okay, spark plugs are about three years old and we're running a bit rich as well. So we're going to put a new set of BP5s in there. These are fives that were already in there anyway. So, uh, and the gapping was a little bit wide on these. So obviously, uh, when we fit the new ones in, we'll gap them at 25. So uh, just a quick opportunity while this is running, actually, uh, just to get uh, a quick sound of a flat engine. So I'll pull the throttle open, it won't even rev up. So yeah, believe it or not, people drive around in cars like that, so let's, uh, let's sort this one out. Okay, so we got this one dialed in in the end. Um, I, uh, in fact, can you just start it up? Yeah. Because obviously we did a we did a little rev experiment earlier, which was quite flat. So let's have a listen now. As you can hear, that revs up perfectly now. Anyway, what was wrong with that was the fact um, that uh, in terms of the um, ignition we was running 10 degrees too retarded on the timing so i've advanced the timing the points gap was fine the dwell angle was fine the resistance on the coil was fine um the uh plugs are changed so we got a new set of bp5s gap to 25 thou uh the um uh vacuum advance cans working fine uh our biggest issue was the carburetor um and we were very lean 1.5 at 4500 rpm at one point so we've taken the needle out. Now, someone's had a new carb on this at some point and they fitted it with an AC needle. So I'm not really sure what, how that got in there, but it was a bit too lean. So we've taken that out, fit an AH2 needle and then modified that uh, to get the fueling uh, right. And uh, we've got a lovely fueling curve on it now. So we're gonna send Dan out in it and uh, see what he thinks. All right, Dan, look at the smile. <laughs> He's been out for a test drive. So, what do you think of the the little Clubman Auto? Well, that's completely different. That is, it, it picks up instantly now. As soon as you touch that throttle, it's off. Changing up through the gears and just much better to drive every day and driving down the road normally. Um, were you expecting that much difference? I wasn't expecting that much difference at all. You think it's low mileage? Not not really done much, so it'll be all right. It'll just not much change at all. But no, it needed quite a bit and it's changed it quite a lot. So more power, smoother? Much power, yeah, loads more power, instant response, and it's just quieter inside, smoother, drives much nicer. Excellent, all right. So uh, uh, in terms of um, telling people with standard cars, uh, would you recommend that they even get their standard ones tuned? Absolutely. You don't need to have it tuned for too much. Just just having it a standard tune is much better than it was. you think it's standard, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, anyway, um, uh, um, and last thing is, would you recommend this to anyone else? Absolutely, yeah, All it's right. completely changed the car. All right, thanks Dan, and thanks for getting us down to look at that, because obviously that nice little Survivor car, uh, you can really enjoy it now, because yeah. it drives probably. Yeah, goes cars and coffee tomorrow now. Test Excellent. Out. <laughs> All right then, uh, thank you very much. Here we are, this time, Hemel Emstead. And we've got this lovely 
retro racer although a road car so you'll notice it's it's a modern car that's uh that's been uh made to look retro i quite like it with the standard 10 inch wheels nice color under the bonnet we have it's not downton but we have a period modification which is an austin 1300 engine put in under the bonnet so my job is to make this work now on this particular video the customer doesn't want to be seen which is absolutely fine so i'll tell you what the uh, the ailments are uh, it's a little bit flat um doesn't quite idle smoothly and uh you know just needs a good good going over and i think there's a flat spot between gear changes as well so uh let's dig in and see what we find okay first things first so um one of the things that bradley asked me to do before i come down to look at his car was to uh get a distributor ready so i've got a electronic conversion a high power one uh with the appropriate high power coil so what was on it was electronic um but it was in a 25d body and the advanced curve was very slow so uh we're going to go from my fast road curve which is much more aggressive uh advanced curve uh we're going to go for a 0.8 ohm coil um using no ballast resistor run the plugs at 35 000. so effectively we're going to run a 1990s ignition system on this car uh to get a nice big fat spark so let's get that installed and dialed up so we've got the uh the new coil on uh we've got the new uh 45d dizzy with a high power module so uh the engine's running i use the original leads because they're in good condition as are the so uh, as are the, the plugs so engine's running now we need to turn our attention to the needle so let's go and have a look at that so we're on to the carburetor uh it's working fine um what we've got in there is a bdl needle uh which is just too lean um it's all right 2000 but it's just too lean everywhere after that so uh in fact it's so lean it's misfiring uh, quite badly so what we're doing is we're changing that to a bba uh, that's actually two lean at 2000, two lean at 3000, then then spot on at four and five. So I'm just gonna tweak that ever so slightly, put that back in, and then this one's ready for a test drive. So to finish off with, we uh, modified the dash pot to uh, fast drop. We left the oil that was in there. In this case, it uses SU20 weight, which is working perfectly. Um, and the original BDL needle was taken out because it was too lean. I replaced it with a BBA, and then that was too lean at two and three, th two to three thousand revs. So, hand modified that, uh, and then uh, Bob's your uncle, as they say. So yeah, this one's uh, all ready. The owner's been out in it, and he's very happy. Hopefully, you enjoyed that episode. Uh, as you can see there, sometimes we can't uh, can't tune every car because the parts are worn and. Uh, that first car there we looked at needed a new carburetor because it was uh, it wouldn't hold the fuel in. So uh, we fit a new carb and, you know, you can see the expression on the owner's face. Absolutely fantastic uh, transformation of the car and they drive brilliantly. I can't, um, you know, I can't sort of state it enough how much of an improvement it is when you fit a new carb to uh, an engine and then dial it in. Uh, they run absolutely superbly. So um anyone out there is thinking of getting it tuned uh by all means you know you don't have to have a new carb but if the carb's not working uh having a new one makes a hell of a difference uh, because uh the new carb is much more able to control the fueling gets rid of all the wear uh does what it's supposed to etc and uh you get very very uh, positive results anyway as ever please like and subscribe and i'll see you soon thanks very much